Tadana, c'est Philippe de Pacific Venturi. Bienvenue dans ce nouvel épisode de Pacific Rue, le podcast d'analyse de l'actualité globale et locale qui t'aide à naviguer efficacement dans ce monde changé. Le week-end dernier, les Australiens ont été aux urnes pour renouveler leur gouvernement. À l'issue de ce vote, le gouvernement en place du Premier ministre Scott Morrison a été fortement sanctionné et c'est le leader du parti travailliste, Anthony Albanese, qui est sorti vainqueur. Cette élection marque donc un tournant dans la gouvernance australienne qui pourrait avoir d'importantes répercussions dans la région pacifique. Pour en parler, nous recevons cette semaine Dr Tarsisius Tara Kabutaulaka, professeur à l'Université de Hawaï et directeur du Centre d'études des îles du Pacifique. Pour ton information, cette interview a été réalisée en anglais. Dr Tara, aloha, yorana. Yeah, aloha and uh, aloha from Honolulu. Just uh, quickly, if you can uh, introduce yourself to our uh, listeners, please. So my name is uh, Tassisius Kabu Taulaka. Most people call me Tara uh, for short. I am an associate professor at the Center for Pacific Island Studies uh, at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Thank you. Uh, and so we invited you today to talk about uh, the recent Australian elections that led to a change in uh, government and with the Labour Party taking over after nine years of uh, conservative uh, rulings. Uh, so from your perspective, uh, can we interpret this election as a heavy sanction uh, towards Scott Morrison, the former prime minister? I think it is. The Australian voters have spoken and they have voted largely against the Liberal Party and more specifically Scott Morrison. Uh, I think this is a vote not only about Liberal Party, uh, but also about Scott Morrison's character and his leadership mm. style. So it's both about the party, but also personally. Mm. Uh, and while the Labour Party has come out as the winner, and hence the election of Anthony Albanese as Prime Minister, there is also, I think, important to look at the way in which the smaller parties have performed. Uh, in particular, the independents, the Greens, mm. the One Nation, the United Australia Party and others. And what we've seen is that we've, we, we've seen a, a decline in, in the votes for both the two major parties, the Liberal Party and the Labour Party. Uh, and so I, I suppose what we can say out mm. of this and is that, you know, people are saying, OK, we'll give Labour an opportunity. But at the same time, I think people are becoming disillusioned about the two major parties as well. Mm. Yeah, it seems that the, the Green Party has uh, went up uh, for these elections, but the One Nation Party has uh, been uh, doing quite bad uh, on, on this yeah. result. And, and, and so that, that's interesting. Uh, uh, it's interesting to see um, you know, how the smaller parties have also performed bad. Good for Labour. They are now in government after so long. Uh, and I think uh, the Pacific Island countries and other countries around the world are looking forward to working with them. Uh, and speaking of the, of the Green Party, uh, when we read through the, the press uh, those days, we, it seems that uh, beyond the Scott Morrison issue, I would say, Uh, one of the main reasons for people to vote for Labour was uh, because they were thinking of the climate issue. So can we consider this election as a wake-up call from Australia to its own environmental problem uh, after years of catastrophe that we followed uh, on the news? Uh, is it finally people uh, deciding to, to do something about it? I think uh, Australian people generally have always, or, well, have, have been aware of the climate change issue. And in particular, you know, we've seen the devastating bushfires, the floods in Queensland and so forth, and people becoming increasingly aware that climate change is not just a, an issue for Pacific Island countries or for other countries out there, but also important to, to Australia and Australians. And uh, it's featured in, in the campaigns uh, and the, in the elections. So I think You are absolutely right that, uh, you know, the Australian voters, uh, climate change has become an issue, maybe not as big as issues mm. such as the economy or, you know, services within Australia, the very domestic issues. Uh, but but it, it is an issue 
that people are considering during elections. Mm. It, can it can it be related also to the arrival in the in the voting uh, population of uh, younger people who may be more sensitive to the climate issue? I think so. I mean, I I haven't seen the statistics on on uh, how the different age groups have voted, but I think that uh, it would not be it it. I I think it's correct to say that younger people are much more aware much more conscious about these kinds of issues. Uh, and so that could be a factor, although, as mm. I say, I haven't seen the statistics on how the different age groups uh, have voted. Yeah. And so you were saying that uh, the results of the election were closely watched by uh, other countries, including for the Pacific. Uh, we saw a few weeks before the election this uh, issue with the deal signed between China and the Solomon Islands and the reaction of the Australian government back then under Scott Morrison. Uh, so now that we have a new government in Australia, what do you think would be uh, Albanese's government position on the matter of relationship with the Pacific uh, going on forward? I think the big issue for the Albanese government is the climate change issues. Pacific Island countries have been quite disappointed mm. with the Scott Morrison government and its dealing with climate change, particularly at international forums such as the uh, conferences on climate change and Australia's lack of support for Pacific Island countries' proposals. Uh, so mm. they're going to be looking at that quite closely. We've seen comments by the new Minister for Foreign Affairs, Penny Wong, uh, stating that you know her government or the Australian government will be working closely with uh, Pacific Island countries on climate change issues. So that's good. It's a good starting point. I think the other issue is, mm. uh, you know, having genuine discussions, conversations about not only climate change, but other issues that are important to the Pacific. Security, for instance, uh, economy, labor movement, mm. all these issues that Pacific Island countries often have with Australia. And one of the criticisms of previous Australian governments is that they do not genuinely listen uh, to Pacific Island countries. Uh, and hopefully that genuine listening will be uh, the case when we have this new government. On the China issue, it's a difficult one mm. uh, because I think the concerns about China's increasing influence will continue to exist uh, in Australia, also because of Australia's alliance with Western countries especially the U.S. through the Indo-Pacific Alliance, the Quadrilateral mm. Alliance, the AUKUS arrangement, and so forth. So Australia, whether it's a Labour government or a Liberal government, and in this case, I suspect the Labour government, will continue to hold strongly to those alliances, and they will influence Australia's decisions uh, on how it approaches the China issue. But on the other hand, as we know, mm. Australia is economically entangled with China. China is one of its largest trading partners, and a lot of it centers around the export of raw material, one of which uh, is coal. Uh, and so that connects the China issue mm. and climate change issue. Uh, and what, what does it mean in terms of uh, you know, the export of coal renewable energy, uh, and so forth. So it's a complicated one. And more recently, in the last day, we've seen uh, that it has been revealed that Beijing is proposing a multilateral agreement with Pacific Island countries that will include issues of security um, uh, and, and, and so forth. And so how, how will the Labour government deal with those complicated issues? Uh, I don't know, but we'll wait and see. Mm. And uh, have you seen any reactions from any Pacific governments about uh, the elections? What were their uh, statements? Uh, do, were they looking more positive with this outcome? Or I think the statements so far have been general and uh, congratulatory, which is expected. Uh, Pacific Island countries have reached out to the newly elected Australian government to congratulate them. Uh, but we'll we'll see when they settle down and they begin to make uh, statements about the Pacific. Already, we've seen 
statements from the foreign affairs minister, uh, but we will see how things go. We know that uh, you know the Labour government hit the ground going with international engagements uh, in Japan and so forth. Uh, what I'm hoping that will change is the rhetoric coming from Cambria on some of the issues relating to uh, the Pacific, in particular the issues with uh, relationships with China. So perhaps if there is no not a, a, a no changes in the in policies, at least there will be changes in the way we talk about these issues and. Uh, the way we have conversations about them. Mm. And that's equally important as well, because hopefully that will bring greater understanding on both sides. Mm. Indeed, uh, the methodology mm. is as important uh, as the content. Uh, my last question uh, for you, Dr. Tara, is uh, going back to China. We saw uh, the recent declaration of President Biden about uh, Taiwan. Uh, so as you said, it probably is not going to have much changes towards uh, Australia and China. Uh, how do you see things moving forward in the coming months, uh, months in the Pacific regarding all those uh, evolutions? I think there are a number of things to look at. The first is, yes, uh, the concerns by Australia, the US, uh, New Zealand, New Zealand's prime minister is here in the US uh, talking to US mm -hmm. representatives and government officials on a number of issues. Uh, those concerns will continue to exist. I don't think that they will suddenly disappear. But it is also, I think, important that China be conscious about this and carries out its diplomacy in a way that is responsible, because otherwise it just enhances uh, the tensions. Uh, and so it's not only an Australia, New Zealand, US issue, it's a China issue as well. And it is also a Pacific Island countries issue. Uh, ultimately, mm. it's the Pacific Island countries that are establishing, carrying out this relationship. So it's important that Pacific Island countries mm. manage their relationships with Australia, New Zealand, the US, China, any other country in ways that it does not increase tension. And I know that is sometimes difficult for small island countries. But I think they have, they bear the responsibility as well. And I'm talking about this both at the bilateral level, relationship between its countries, but also at the multilateral level in terms of through the regional architectures, particularly through the Pacific Island Forum and how they deal multilaterally uh, in their relationship with other countries. So I think it's a time that's, we, we are going to see increased geopolitical competition. Uh, that's not going to go away, but it is a time for responsible mm -hmm. diplomacy on all sides, uh, from China's part, Australia's part, the US, and also our Pacific Island countries. And I, I hope that that uh, you know, responsible diplomacy uh, can be demonstrated at all levels. We can, uh only hope that the Pacific way of uh, dealing with those situations is uh, privileged regarding the ongoing yeah. tensions. Yeah. All right, uh, Dr. Taras, thank you very much for your time and uh, for all your insights on the, the results of the Australian election. Thank you for having me and you have a good day. Au regard de la situation actuelle de notre région, il est en effet important que le dialogue entre les États se fasse de façon responsable, amicale et transparente, comme le souligne Dr. Tara dans cette interview. Et si l'on peut espérer des évolutions positives sur le plan de la lutte contre le changement climatique grâce à ce nouveau gouvernement australien, bien des zones de tension seront à surveiller de près dans les mois à venir. Si tu veux en savoir plus sur le résultat des récentes élections en Australie, n'hésite pas à aller voir la newsletter Tehoe sur ce thème. Tu peux la retrouver sur notre site internet www.pacificventuri.com et tu peux également t'y inscrire pour ne jamais manquer un numéro. A la semaine prochaine pour un nouvel épisode, un nouveau thème. Prends bien soin de toi, Nana